Right, here we go. The fourth of the pre-season series sessions and the guest today is Sam Northeast. So first of all, Sam, how are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, very well. Um, to have come back to Canterbury for a few days, so uh, nice and relaxed. But yeah, happy to, uh, to be home with the family for a couple of days. Excellent. Well, it's a nice uh, change of pace during pre-season. I'm afraid I'm going to take you a little bit out of the uh, re the relaxing states uh, to start with and just uh, there's a theme that I wanted to explore a little bit and that's this idea of in your line of work as it were uh, being that making runs is what you do for a living and how you deal with the fact that there's so many variables that are around it and very little actually that you can control so what's your approach to that given those pressures that can exist well, as you said it, it's it's not easy you know conditions bowlers going through bad run of, run of form can be can be really tough um it's it's you know, trying to get yourself away from it having those distractions you know if it's you know, spending time on the golf course or whatever, or spending time with family. Um, I mean, it's sort of weirdly, I mean, when when I took over the captaincy at Ken for a bit, it was actually, it sort of helped my batting in the way that it was a distraction away from us sort of caring about everyone else um, and not necessarily about my batting as much. You know, I used to go home and, you know, you used to shadow bat and think, oh, you know, what am I doing wrong or whatever it is. But as you say, if you can take yourself away from, from cricket for sort of a few moments, then yeah, you become a little bit more refreshed and the pressure on you, etc. I think it's important to have people around you who you can trust. And the insecurities are the things which really are, that's the issue is that when you got you think, oh, it's you know, it's am I going to lose my place, um, my contract and stuff like that. But if you've got people around you who you have faith in, who you can sort of turn to when it's not going so well, etc., then. I think that's a huge, um, it's a huge help, but and also a realization that playing cricket is tough, and that you're not going to be a perfect. You know, nothing's ever going to go the sort of the way that you want it to. Like every day, I mean, we fail more times than we succeed in this game. And if you're, if you don't stay level and pretty sort of consistent, or sort of in the middle, you don't get too high when things are going well. You don't get too low when it's not going so well. Then that's normally going to sort of have you in good stead, I'd say. Would it be the case, though, that this way of approaching it, which does sound very measured and, and calm and considered, has that taken a bit of work as time's gone on across your career? Um, definitely. I mean, I think that that beginning when you start off your career, that is the, the toughest thing ever, trying to get you're sort of trying to convince yourself that you're good enough to play professional cricket, you know, and that's, uh, and to have sort of recognition from other people. And you don't really know your game. You don't really know if it's ever going to work. And that's the toughest thing, trying to get in. And then when you're in, you know that you've sort of done it in the past. So you've got something to go back to at all times. But that, the start of my career, especially, I mean, that was tough. You know, you're sort of failing all the time and going out, am I actually going to become, is this going to be my job? Um, and then you sort of, as you said, you've got family to fall back on. And I always had very good coaches at, at Kent who I had sort of trust in. They had trust in me, which helped a lot. So there's always somebody to sort of fall back on. Um, but it was a struggle. Yeah, it's, it's a long, it's a process which, which takes. And then, you know, at the end of your career, you're sort of looking for the next sort of chapter in your life, I guess. You know, and you're thinking, oh, well, what else like, can I do? And that takes a bit of pressure off as well. If you know... That you've got something to fall back on um, and you're not just trying to sort of play every year to sort of make a living I guess and you've got something else and then that takes the pressure off as well. Hmm. And I, I never tire of asking people in the professional game this question because I think it's got such fascinating depth to it. Identity as a professional sports person what you've said there indicates that you don't just see yourself as a batter or a professional cricketer. It, there's more to it. What's the importance of that? Why is that something which we keep coming back to in these conversations? Well, it, it affects you as a as a person, really. You know, if, if everything's on you 
going out into the middle and scoring runs, then your mood is going to be determined by, you know, what happened that day um, and who you are. And, you know, and somebody else is allowed to have a good day opposite you. So um, if, if every day you're sort of determining your happiness is on, you know, what happens on the cricket pitch, then, then that's going to be a pretty tough way of living. And it's going to be a tough sort of career as well. You know, if you're every sort of minute you're high and low, um and that's that's really tough that's really tough to say but you know there's there's no doubt even even in this moment there's you know I've, I've played for for a while but you know there's still you know sort of moments of, of doubt and thinking oh you know what when's the next sort of run going to come from and you go home and you think oh you know well can I change something this and that and you know, you're home with the family and you're not quite present because you're still thinking about the game absolutely it still sort of happens now but you just get a little bit better on sort of compartmentalizing it and putting it sort of way to one side for a bit and then switching back on the next day and and coming and it's definitely something about I think cricketers have this ability to to come again the next day where it's you know it's, you can have the worst day ever you know I sort of just played with somebody um in a pre-season game I probably had the worst day <laughs> I've sort of seen somebody have, and the next day got, you know, got 80, you know, after such a, and we just have that ability to sort of, to come back. And it's a good trait of a cricketer just to have that ability, just to sort of go, right, that's, that's, that happened. You know, that's, that's, you know, it happens in cricket. You know, there's another day, there's always another day, you know, and it's going to come around pretty quick in county cricket. Yeah, if you could bottle that ability, that resilience and sell it, then I don't think, you'd need to do anything for work ever again because that's <laughs> everyone's everyone's after is there anything consciously you've you've done to try and get that as a feature of what you do i think that over time i've sort of just surrounded myself with people who are generally pretty positive so everything's uh, you know sometimes we can go oh that that was rubbish and you beat yourself up and go and then everything's a bit of a spiral of going that wasn't good enough that wasn't good enough um but the sort of people i sort of go and turn to are normally very positive uplifting and if you surround yourself with sort of good enough people um yeah you have a lot of sort of a better positive outlook on life i think mm. and that of course can be not only the sort of coaches that you've mentioned or senior um figures but the, the teammates and the wider group around and I was doing some thinking earlier about how yeah we can score runs we can take wickets we can contribute in the field but there's also a long day whether it's club cricket or professional cricket where you're always there as a teammate and you can be a good one or a not so good one how important is that to you both you being one of those people that is a teammate and your teammates to you to support what you're doing yeah, it's um, it's crucial, really. I think that there's um, sometimes doing nothing is good as well. So if someone's struggling and uh, and then every sort of teammate comes over to him and goes, oh, I think you need to do this, you need to do that. And then suddenly everyone's sort of round the, the net telling you what to do. You sort of feel pretty bad as well. You know, that's the uh, sort of a quiet word if you feel that's right. Um, but I think the sort of important thing more to that is being in team environments where there's a, a sort of a blame culture and everyone's going around and cliques happen and then suddenly you think oh he just thinks I'm pretty rubbish or this and that and he's blaming me for that and that's that's when a sort of a team sort of it, it gets pretty sort of bad I think in, in my sort of, but sort of knowing when to support somebody at times is quite crucial as well yeah I think it could be a sort of too much hands on everyone wanting to sort of have their peace everyone saying you need to do this you need to do that and it makes you feel worse you've got a million sort of ideas through your head of how to sort of play the game but i think if, if in general you've got a sort of a team which doesn't blame everyone else everyone looks at themselves and goes right how can i be better the next day it's trying to help out in the best way possible sometimes you get it wrong and you say things which aren't it's come from a good sort of um, perspective but you just don't get it quite right um but if you have those team environments then that's a that's a good place to be but you so i've been in, in environments which you know and like everyone's looking over their shoulder going oh does he think oh, you know it's my fault we lost that game or whatever and if you get into that place it can be pretty a pretty bad uh, environment to be in and who who largely would you say is responsible for 
for setting up that supportive environment rather than one which can do the opposite but it's the management which sets that out um and man management is you know, it's half the battle for a coach and a captain and trying to get that right and you're not going to be able to get it right with everyone because everyone wants something a little bit different. Some people want an arm around the shoulder. Some people want to be left quiet or whatever it is. So that man management side of things is quite crucial. And as you know, teammates, you get to know people and to and how to sort of respond to them when they're not doing so well. It might be you know going out for a coffee with them or whatever, or bigging them up or whatever it is. Um, but you know, sometimes it's. it's with that in that team it's about going outside because you feel a bit judged inside you're not everything's not going quite well it might be a case just going back right going back to sort of an old coach or someone or doing something a bit different you know going and hitting with your sort of you know, your club teammates or something making you feel good you know being in a sort of a nice environment you've sort of been to been with and feel comfortable with and getting yourself back with a bit of confidence rather than sometimes we sort of go back we struggle all the time keep struggling um and sometimes it's about taking yourself out of that and going to somebody you should, as you said, you should trust them or something which is a bit more familiar. And what we probably consider from an like open up cricket's perspective is that beauty of team sport that there's opportunities to support people. And what we've discussed is largely, I guess, around helping people with their performance and getting something out of their, their cricket in that respect. But it's also because we spend so much time with those people, um, an outlet for someone to get a bit of help and support when it comes to things that maybe aren't cricket, something that's going on at home, a problem that they might be encountering, perhaps if that is health-wise or just something circumstantial. How easy, or indeed hard, is it to make use of that within an environment where people are competing for places? I think it's it, it's becoming more. Um, I think more people are doing it now than it probably was ten, you know, fifteen years ago when I first came into the game. You know, walking around the boundary with a sports psychologist was definitely seen as a no-no. You know, fifteen years ago. Now it's pretty much everyone does it. Um, going out and and seeing people like yourselves, or you know, going to PCA for a little bit of extra help is it's you know it should it should be done it should be part of everyone's um that's a not daily basis but you know they should go and have support um because you know i think as i said sort of earlier getting sort of external support it could be quite crucial because you don't want to be seen going to the head coach and going i'm just not feeling quite right at the moment or to the captain or whatever or even maybe teammates you might feel a bit embarrassed about something at home or whatever it is so external um, people can be can be brilliant it can really help you out and um, I definitely encourage anyone to do that for sure mm. and that's I think a really good point that it's it's not necessarily about who it is you speak to it's the fact that you rec one recognizes there is someone available for that and with that we speak uh, about the mental side of the game being so important and that's all the way from people playing their junior cricket and feeling pressure all the way up to the professional game. How much do you feel and over your experience that the attention to the mental side of the game in preparation and training matches up with how much of the game you actually think is about what's between your ears? Um, I mean, I, we probably still don't do it enough and it's probably not recognised enough as a, as a sport and it, it is the toughest it's the toughest sport it must be up there with sort of golf or whatever i mean in sort of football and rugby you can sort of run around and you know you can get your sort of performances better through doing something like that and sometimes the harder you try in cricket the sort of the worse you get and the more you want it uh sort of further away you get as well um there is definitely i i think that through a season, there's so many ups and downs of cricket. You fail so many times that you need that that support basis. And if you're not getting it at home, or you don't think that that you are, then yeah, and you're not getting it in the team, then you know you need to try and find some solution to it. Um, and, and we don't think we do. We we don't necessarily 
recognize that and we always think that oh you know it must be technical or something like that you know we must be you know we must be falling over a ball or something like that but actually something might be going on in your head which is distracting you from from your day in day out um work so yeah no it's um it's, it's such a big part of the game and it's definitely more and more people are recognizing that but i think more needs to be done for sure mm. and i think the way for us who, who play it for a bit of fun or, or allegedly fun uh, can use some of those mental the mental side of it is the skills are transferable to other areas of your life so for someone like yourself who's capable of batting for really long periods of time are you conscious of the strategies that you use to maintain that concentration uh, and if so what what are they? What do you go to to be in the best position mentally to be able to do that? Um, the honest truth is no. I mean, it's it's something which I is when I played as a youngster, you always played a lot of sort of longer format. And so in terms of sort of realising from a mental perspective what you're doing and how you're switching off and on, um, it's something which for me became rel relatively natural. Um, but like sort of going from between the two, going from like a four day game to then sort of trying to, you know, knock it out of the boundary in a T20, yeah, it's still mental. It takes you that from where you're going, like, I'm not, I don't want to get out. So then suddenly you've got to release your everything and play with freedom. You know, that's a mental side, which sometimes, you know, I definitely struggle with. It's, it's that tough and how you get yourself into that mental state. Um, but I always think that the environment is so important to how you feel as a player. You know, if you feel that you can't do certain things. So if you don't feel like you can't play certain shots, you, you don't feel like you can express yourself in the team environment and do things the way you want to do them and, and how you feel when you're playing the game that other people, you know, want you to play, then that's not really a great place to be in. Um, so I think that, ex that expression, that freedom, which the club, can make you feel and that's why you know certain people and they sort of they play much better in certain environments more than others because their expression they feel more comfortable in a certain environment than others um, and it's about getting yourself into that mental state where you feel very comfortable that whatever decision you're making you're making the right one rather than thinking oh you know what's what does the coach want me to do now or you know what is you know you know committee members or whatever it is or feeling the pressure then that's not a good place to be in. I think you want to be able to go out and play the way you want to play and have the sort of the career that you want rather than everyone else determining that. Mm. That makes, makes me think, how much are players in this um, modern time the victim of pigeonholing? And we do it as fans, really. We see certain players and think, oh, they're more suited to this game, this version of the game or that version of the game. How can that affect someone who's then being told despite the fact they're working their backside off that they are more of a play more of a t20 or more of a four-day player yeah i think it's it's big you know it's like social media as well people tell you you've got an issue or something you read on twitter and you are oh, you know he's got an issue outside of stump and they just it's just in your head for however long you know i've got an issue here or you can't, you know, there's a coach who say you can't play T20 or something, and you go, oh, I, well, maybe I can't, you know, and you suddenly become um, paralysed by these thought processes of what other people think of you rather than actually what you think of yourself and what you can do. So, as we sort of said, you know, there's, a, there will, there's all these distractions in cricket from, you know, the bowler, the conditions, but actually it can be from the coach, it can be from, you know, looking on social media and thinking, you know, reading about yourself for however many and think then telling saying that you're this and that and then suddenly you go away from your strengths and you try and become something you're not and that's it's the insecurities coming over obviously but if you can try and sort of block all those distractions out then you know it's not easy in social media and these this and that it's um can become quite hard for like a modern athlete and cricketer to to perform when you're doing that but you know if you can try and escape from certain things and and stay pretty neutral then you know that that'll help hmm. okay i've got just a couple more things uh to to ask i think one thing that comes out is that you appear to have a a healthy detachment from the game so it's not all encompassing it's not something which 
it, it, at your best doesn't affect everything you do for good or for bad. But when you're within that in, environment professionally and you're looking to adjust or make a correction based on the ultimate feedback of getting out a certain way, what's your process to to that? Is that something where you'll kind of flog yourself as hard as you can to, to do it or is there still the opportunity to, to be relaxed and actually enjoy the training, enjoy having that hit as you as you work towards your next game? Yeah, I mean, that's, um, it's, a bit, it's an interesting, I mean, I sort of, you do sort of um, fret about it a little bit. So you sort of, there's, if there's something a little bit wrong in my game, I would like, I'll overthink about it probably, you know, knowing me, I'll probably go home and pick up a bat and go, you know, and start thinking about it. And the best probably thing is, you know, for me to go on a dog walk or something and take my mind off it because actually it's never as bad as what I'm probably thinking in my head or, you know, I've got bowled twice in a row. I'm thinking there must be something technical or what's going on. You know, this isn't quite right. And, um, and yeah, you sort of go in the next day and you like, you know, you hit for hours on end, you know, because you're like, you know, trying to find this magic button, but realise that it's probably not there and you're really not far away from, from where, you know, from finding form again. and and when you're out of form, you know, you think that you're never going to score 100 ever again and all these things. But actually, there's, you, know, you hit a few balls in the middle and then you're away again. And that's the sort of, that's the, uh, that's the sort of the beauty of playing cricket. It's you're really not far away, but sometimes it does. You know, you feel like you're miles away. But as I said at the start, I think that over time, I sort of just surrounded myself with people who, who I sort of trust and I feel comfortable in. I believe in and they believe in me and they believe in my game. And, from that, I get confidence to perform in the middle um, and, you know, surround myself with your know, family and all these people just, yeah, you make, make me feel good about myself and, you know, you put myself in a good headspace, I guess, when I, when I get to the ground. Mm, yeah, brilliant. Okay. The last one, and we've, we have touched on the theme of life away from the game seems a, a consistent theme. Um, when you move into your next career, whenever that would be, what do you think, will be the most important lessons that playing professional sport will have given you? I think we said this earlier, that it's not, I think it's cricket is as, it can be as tough as it gets, you know, from mental resilience, trying to come back, you know, and really perform the next day when you've had a rubbish day and there's millions of rubbish days over your, your career. And having that sort of bounce back ability is a bit of a buzzword, but having that you know coming back in again and performing and having that resilience to just put things to one side and and turn up and perform and try and forget the last you know month of not scoring runs or whatever it might be I think critic, cricketers are pretty good at that you know but that it, it can also it can drag you down and you know people you see people which are you know it's affected them over that period of time because you know it's, it's eating them away but I think cricketers they do they find that that resilience I think that cricket just it leads to that you have to be pretty mentally strong and how you get there it's probably through time and experience and um you know cricket can be a pretty fickle world you're the best player one minute you know the worst player the next but you know if you can try and sort of remain level at some stage then i think i think that's the sort of the lesson to take out of it you're probably never as bad as what you think you are yeah well i mean that's a spot on place to finish the last thing i'll say is all the best with the season that comes up going to be looking out to see even if there is a low score, that there's always the next innings. And I think that's a great lesson for everyone to think of. Thanks very much, Sam. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark.